I have to tell you right off the top, I'm I'm just uh, distraught this morning. Jeremy Clarkson, who is the the really the, the star of the Top Gear program out of England, which uh, of all the Top Gear shows is is probably the best, and it's probably the best because he's on it. He has been suspended by the BBC. Well, well, they they claim he's been a problem child over the last few years. He occasionally has said some things that aren't politically correct. And during a shoot the other day, after a long, grueling day behind the wheel of the car, <clears throat> he's got the best job in the world. Or he did. He did. He's got a month left on his contract. He's been suspended because at the end of the day, when he finished driving, he asked the show's producer where the hot food was. And the producer said, we have none. Clarkson decked him. So now he's suspended. Even the British Prime Minister has weighed in, urging the BBC to bring him back. Anyway, that's what's going on on the other side of the pond. Here on these shores in the good old USA, a lot more to talk about today. Some of the things that we have going on in the 9 o'clock hour, Kelton Hatch will be joining us. Ken Menzel is expected to be along in about uh, 20 minutes from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. He'll be talking with us about some of the most wanted individuals right here in this county. Some of whom, and we've discussed this before, don't even know that they're wanted. Wouldn't it be nice to be wanted? Well, not in that sense. That's, that's probably the best way to look at that. So we'll touch on a lot of those issues. There is a news conference going on right now in Ferguson, Missouri. Actually, Clayton, Missouri, to be more accurate. But it involves shooting of two police officers last night. Perhaps we'll get some thoughts on that a little bit later in the program, too, as well. Blame Eric Holder. Blame Barack Obama. And I'm sure Al Sharpton is all excited about this happening today uh, because, of course, he played a large role in whipping up the uh, the hate for the uh, for the folks in blue. Bill Colley with you this morning. It's eight minutes after 8 o'clock, 46 at our studios. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And the program is known as Top Story, and I thank you for joining us today. Before we go any... any well, Got a lot to talk about, as I say. There's something that I saw last night getting ready for bed. I get a daily email from Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, who some of you may know, former congressman, uh, was, a, was a tremendous, tremendous soldier fighting in the war in Iraq, saved the lives of many, many, many of his uh, men and women uh, under his command. And then he, he paid the ultimate price because the military didn't like his political incorrectness. They threw him in the brig for a while. He was released after public outrage, served for a time in Congress, and now runs an organization devoted, really, to traditional American principles in Texas. But he was writing on his website last night, where the heck is Bo Bergdahl? The Idahoan who went AWOL for five years or so in Afghanistan and, uh, and then finally was released in a trade with President Obama giving several cutthroats back to the enemy in exchange for Bergdahl's release. The colonel writes, where the heck is Bo Bergdahl? Is he hiding in the same location as Hillary Clinton's emails? And he says, let me be more specific. Where is the investigative report that we were told was completed last year in October? And he says, I want to clarify a point. It does not take a senior U.S. Army general this long to determine what has already been determined in a Pentagon report from 2010. So for five years, we've really known this guy walked away, abandoned his post, and said he wanted to join the enemy, gone native in the parlance of the British, who we were just talking about a few minutes ago, and then eventually apparently despaired of of being a member of the uh, enemy cabal and was released in a trade. And it uh, it was a great big dog and pony show at the White House, the president saying, oh, I've done a wonderful thing. I'm bringing this American home. And yet the people who actually served with him believe that he gave evidence and comfort to the enemy, of which was turned around and used to kill some of the men that he had served with. Now, that is a very serious crime. And yet we don't know October, November, December, January, February. We are six months along since that report was compiled. We still don't know what's going on with this story. Why? Is it being covered up? And where is he? Is is he sitting on his uh, parents' uh, back deck, sipping a tall iced tea right now as we speak? Or is he somewhere at Leavenworth chopping rocks? Or has someone already put the rope around his neck and kicked him off the chair as his punishment for what what he happened to do? I I just raise these questions because we are in in, in apparently a news blackout on that particular story. You can reach our program today. 
locally at 736-0300. That is 736-0300. And you can also drop me an email. Fairly simple way to contact me. Well, unless you're Hillary Clinton, you'd have to delete all the correspondence afterwards. Bill.Colley at townsquaremedia.com. And the last name is spelled C-O-L-L-E-Y. Bill.Colley at townsquaremedia.com. 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, we have a caller joining us. You're on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. I don't know where Bo Budol is. But I'm guessing he's probably up there in that little town of Haley, hiding out, living high on the hog, thanks to Obama. He's a traitor. He needs a firing squad offense, but he is probably living high on the hog. I would admit he's probably being well-fed and well taken care of and in a warm place. I thank you for the telephone call. When the caller said he's a traitor, I was thinking, yes, and what about Bergdahl? Oops, can, can we get away with that one? I'll just, I thought I'd bring that up just for a moment. I'm sure there are people out there who, every time they hear that, they, they just, you know, you can tell the liberals think, ooh, the steam coming out of their ears and screaming in the background, no! But sorry, that's how most of America feels in this day and age. You're up next, and you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, Bill, I think uh, us conservatives need to go back up and put the blindfold back on the on uh, Lady Justice because, you know, this political correctness and everything is making things bad and getting worse. Bo Bergdahl is a good deal. I mean, we knew he did what he did way before the trade came. There was no secret about it. But yet our own troops in the line of battle shoot somebody that's giving away their their uh, point of origin, and, and they're in jail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yet somebody that gave stuff, and know, we know for a fact he did it, and got people killed of our own people walking free. Now, how does this work? I mean, it, it, we're just like Ferguson. Those guys keep shooting cops. They think things are going to get better with the cops? That's idiotic. And I thank you much for the call. And, and you know, in reference to that, they're lucky in Ferguson that, that the police, and I would not have blamed the police after this situation last night if they had just returned fire into the crowd. When someone is shooting at you and uh, you, you're supposed to take their, uh, sit there and take it, I, I just I find that to be absurd. But as the caller pointed out, a guy like Alan West, who saved the lives of a great many people in his command, when he, he fired his, his service pistol into a fire pit, that is the sand next to him, in order to frighten a spy into giving up uh, the details of people who were actually attacking Americans in that sector, he was locked up for a while. And yet no one else in his command was ever attacked after that. The attacks from the enemy came to a sudden halt because of his actions. He got locked up. Bergdahl may sail. You're up next. You're on the air on Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and what's up? Well, speaking of, speaking of traitors, uh, I don't know if you noticed that our local newspaper, Autumn Agar down there, claims to be some sort of a conservative, and I guess, but the op-ed page is, is anything goes, I, I guess. But when they call our senators, Crapo and Rich, traitors, uh, you know, I know they may not be perfect, but they're sure as hell not traitors. And when our president releases five dangerous uh, Muslim terrorist leaders for Bo Bergdahl, a, you know, a deserter, and he's not in Haley. He, I don't know where he's at, but he's not up there. And so it's, you, you say, it, it's insanity. It's just like what happened in Ferguson last night. I went to bed. I didn't know. This morning here we got this news conference. Race relations in this country are as bad as I, I can remember them in my life. And uh, it's all because of the, per, the perpetuation by this administration and, and everybody in it. And they want this thing to break down. And anybody that believes otherwise, I think, must be delusional or something. In other words, we call them liberals. I thank you very much for the telephone call. It's 816-46 at our studios. When it comes to Senators Crapo and Rich signing on uh, with the other 45 Republicans, 
Let me tell you something. For all of these yammerers, these leftists who are screaming that this is somehow traitorous, Washington Examiner yesterday published this on its op-ed pages, and this is not a liberal rag by any means, but they have researched everything they're talking about. They have five examples of where Democrats over the last 30 years have undercut all the Republican presidents when it comes to foreign affairs. And names like Nancy Pelosi, does that sound familiar? Uh, David Bonnier, who was another uh, a ne'er-do-well in Congress as well, uh, undercutting a uh, Republican administration. How about Teddy Kennedy? And there are examples here of everything that they've done. Uh, and then 10 Democratic lawmakers who undercut Ronald Reagan with the, uh, with the Sand and Nasties in Nicaragua. So the, you've got all of this going on, and yet that's considered okay because, well, they're Democrats. I will point out, our two U.S. senators, along with the two U.S. senators from Utah— and the one Republican U.S. Senator from Nevada all signed on against the ATF's ammo grab last week, and they managed to stop that. I think they're good patriots in that situation. You're up next, and you're on KLIX. God, talk about keeping us hostage with your hate, dude. Please. You're all I'll alone out there, you. Bubba. You're all uh, alone out there. There's maybe five uh, of you. If there was an old-fashioned phone booth, you liberals could caucus in it. You're all alone. You, you, you're all alone. So. Oh, you sleep alone. Oh, that's right. You and hatred. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You're all alone out there, dude. You may have just heard all of those other callers. You're the only one. That's you're the it. outlier. You're the only one out there. You, you know, you, you sit around and you preach your communist hoo-ha, and you th seem to believe that everyone else is on board with you. I'm going to tell you right now, you are clearly, clearly outside the mainstream and clearly beyond the pale. 818. Preaching hate because I mentioned the fact that Bo Bergdahl got some of his, his buddies killed. And I'm the one who's preaching hate. Bo Bergdahl, likely, his actions led to the deaths of five of the men and women that he served with in Afghanistan. And this goon, this kook, calls up and claims that I'm the hater? My gosh, we're talking about the lives of brave Americans that were sacrificed because this fellow couldn't keep his head on straight. What kind of human being are you that you would approve of that? You're up next. It's 819. Are you there? I am speaking. Okay. Yeah, I'm, you know, this guy, he's something else. Uh, you know, and he loved it when Jill was on there because Jill would just go into her liberal rants <laughs> and, and just shout Kelly down until he just never defended himself. But, you know, I don't care. These guys do not abide by the law unless... Unless it fits them, yeah. and then it then it then it doesn't work. And if they think that everything is going on that's fair and that racial relationships are great right now, then they are sadly mistaken. I would and agree. Hey, I gotta let you run, to... though. Thank you much for the call. I gotta let you run. Uh, race relations right now, according to all statistics, and this comes from every minority group as well as the majority in the country, are abysmal, according to all surveys. Weather next to, well, 46. I have a couple of guests joining me in the studio this morning, and uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about an issue. In fact, at uh, this time of year especially, well, we would normally say when the snow melts. We haven't had to worry about too much snow melt uh, uh, when it comes to this year. But when I was a kid and the snow would melt... We used to always dislike uh, Easter vacation because that meant you had to spend a week fixing fence. Yes. Uh, but uh, when the snow melts, you can actually see what's happened and, and fences become big issues. Uh, we, we want to point out you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com means you can hear us anywhere around the world online. And this is Top Story with Bill Colley. 45 at our studios, it's 824. Uh, Sergeant Ken Menzel from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department is here along, and you brought a guest, too. I did. I brought Deputy Radmel with me today. Uh, before we, uh, or after we get done talking about our most wanted individuals, uh, there's a topic that we'd like to focus upon. We mentioned it briefly with fences. Sure. Um, before we get to that, uh, the Sheriff's Office is interested in finding a couple people. Uh, the first one we're looking for is John Paul Bell. His date of birth is 5 26 of 83. He's about 31 years of age. He's 5'8", 140 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes, last known to be in the Twin Falls area. He's got two warrants, one for $35,000 for burglary and another for $5,000 for driving without privileges. If anybody knows where Mr. Bell is at, we'd be interested in finding him. 
Call us at our dispatch center at 735-1911 or 732-5387. That's Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous when you call out and be eligible for a cash reward. Nadia Lastchuk is another individual we're looking for. Nadia was born 729 of 75. She's about 39. Uh, she's 5'2", 120 pounds with brown hair and green eyes. And we're looking for Nadia because she also has a warrant for $25,000 for burglary. So if you know where we can get a hold of our uh, two individuals, we would certainly appreciate it by calling us at uh, Crime Stopper 732-5387 or dispatch at 735-1911. Now, talking about fences, I think a lot of this has to do with just various property issues that are going to be coming up, right? Absolutely. Um, you see um, whether it's um, water issues, we're seeing some of the canals start to fill with water, um, fence issues. Uh, recently, we've been getting a lot of phone calls with individuals having their livestock get out, cows and horses, llamas. Um, it's not a pretty sight when you see uh, uh, somebody's crashed into somebody's cow and either the cow runs off hurt and you can't find it or you've got a severely mangled or dead cow there on the side of the road. Uh, Idaho Code uh, has a pretty specific, um, and it's very detailed. I, I didn't realize this until this morning when Deputy Radmel, who's here with me this morning, uh, pointed out that Title 35 in the Idaho Code Book um, spells out specifically what kinds of fences are legal um, or, or how they have to be maintained. You can shed a little bit more light on that, can't you, Deputy Radmel? I can. There's there's several different styles of fences as far as different kinds of wires or, or wood, and the, the Title 35 really spells out um, what, what is required in each one. And I think more than anything, if you're going to have animals, they're going to get out, and that's just that's just the general rule of owning animals. And what we really want to get across is, if you have questions on this title, we'd be more than happy to come out and discuss it with you, and and even print that that statute out for you and, and go over it with you, so that you have a clear understanding of what we're looking at. And that's because sometimes a fence gets put up, and it just it's not strong enough to hold the livestock. Right. Correct. Yeah, if you've got a specific fence that uh, some fences require four strands, some require three strands, it depends on the material that the fence is made out of. And uh, really this time of year, uh, cattle have been kept inside their, these fences and whatnot, and feed starts to run low. Uh, if your fence isn't in great condition, as Deputy Radmel pointed out, animals are going to want to get out and find food. And if the fence isn't properly constructed, uh, laying down or just in bad repair, uh, it makes it even more easy for those animals to get out and become a problem. I know that when I was a teenager, we had neighbors up the road who had horses, and I can remember more than a few times looking out the front window and seeing them grazing in our front yard. Right. And and that would happen uh, once or twice sometimes in the spring until somebody decided to get some repairs done. But there you go again. If you got a sturdy fence, even with a bad winter, it should hold, right? Yes. If you build it to, to specifications. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's not uncommon to see somebody's llamas or cows or horses grazing in the front yard because that's where the grass is at. That's yeah. That's llamas, it, it seems to be a nationwide problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, have, I have a friend I worked with one time, and he was late coming into work for the morning show, and that's because he came over a rise in the road, and he had this beautiful old uh, Dodge that he picked up in some southern dealership, so the car was still in great shape, and he, he would baby that car like you wouldn't believe. But it didn't work when he came over the rise in the road and he hit a horse mm. because a horse happened to be out there for that reason. And it ruined the car, totaled the car. Horse got up and walked away. But, um, you know, there could be some serious injury here, too. Absolutely. Uh, I remember it wasn't too long ago that Deputy Radmel and several of our other deputies were out chasing, was it one or two llamas? And we spent uh, quite a while one morning just trying to round it up and was very unsuccessful in trying to get that just because of how fast they were. But. Yeah, you know, animals are a lot like people. It always looks better on the other side of the fence. Yeah, they, they like to wander, yeah. right? It's like a dog. They, once they get to out in the neighborhood, they want to see more of it. Well, I'd like to thank the two of you for coming by today. Once again, what's that number at Crime Stoppers? Crime Stoppers, 732-5387, and our dispatch center, 735-1911. So you, you've got some advice, people. Remember, look at that fence. Make sure it's up to code. And if you need some assistance with what that is, call these folks. They can give you the details. Thanks, Bill. It's 830. Thank you. Uh, 46 is our temperature right now. We've got more coming up. Kelton Hatch will join us in the next hour from Idaho Fish and Game. I did mention, I think in the last segment, Kelton Hatch is going to be coming up in the next hour. And he's going to be talking with us about some uh, issues related to Idaho Fish and Game. And we've talked in the past about 
certain issues that have come up because a lot of what we do when it comes to licensing and the like that funds a great deal of our conservation efforts and our enforcement efforts. And yet I'm looking through what's going on at the state legislature in Boise right now, and it looks as if, despite a lot of proposals this year, you, you had people talking about a big fund, creating a big fund for transportation issues. You had people talking about creating uh, a, a large fund to give teachers raises, because the notion is if you have higher paid teachers, you'll retain more teachers or you'll bring more people to the profession who might otherwise pass it up. Well, according to the AP wire today, some of these issues have been greatly scaled back. And I think that's because you have people in government. And I have to be honest with you, I think they're looking around and they're realizing the cost of doing a lot of these things. And they are trying their best to remember the taxpayers on the other end. Whenever I see these people who show up and, and, and make a pitch for whatever program they're working on and we need more money, everybody needs more money. But after a while, you have, to, you have to start to say to yourself, the spigot has gone dry, and there's no more money to be, to be collected. And you know we can't keep squeezing people until we bleed them dry. So the, the, the proposal for the transportation, which I think at one time had been a dime added to the gasoline tax per gallon, has been scaled back to a nickel. That looks like that might be the one that passes. And it looks as if raises for teachers, which a lot of folks thought was a done deal, actually stalled in committee yesterday. So that may not happen this year, which was going to be a lot of additional money in the budget. And then you get over to fish and game, and I think sometimes when it comes to wildlife issues and sportsmen's issues, they really get pushed to the back burner. Even though it, when, it, when it comes right down to it, the tourism business in this state uh, thrives on it, and bringing people in and having people with licenses for for hunting and fishing and the like is a good revenue generator, which unlike a lot of these other issues, is not a revenue generator. So it, it, it's almost revenue neutral in that sense. But we may not see a lot of changes coming this year. They may just decide to hold the line and put things off for another year or another two years. But but it's a nationwide problem too as well. When When the country is stretched so thin and is in so much debt on a national level, and you've got state governments this not being anywhere near among the worst, I should point out. Uh, Idaho, I think, finished ninth when it came to being responsible with taxpayers' money. Ninth out of 50 states, or 51, they counted the District of Columbia in the survey I saw a couple of weeks ago. Still, a great many of these states can't afford anything because of promises they made to uh, state workers and to retirees, and the benefits, they can't pay them off. It was a short-term thing. Hey, we'll win some votes if we make these promises and by the time we leave office, it'll be someone else who will have to pick up the pieces. And the result of that is you've got new legislators coming in in places like Illinois and some of those high tax states, and they're going to the federal government asking the taxpayers all over the country bail them out. So not only would you be paying more to support government here in Idaho for the things we basically need, but you're going to be asked to bail out other states where they were much, much more irresponsible. It's 837. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. This is News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Do want to mention some of our fine sponsors this morning, if I could, just for a moment. You were with us yesterday, I hope, and you got to hear the, the folks from, uh, uh, well, we're talking health issues on Wednesdays between 8 30 and 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX. That is Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. In fact, if you were with us yesterday, we had a good spirited conversation on air and, and joined by some of our callers as well about immunizations. But from week to week, we're going to be talking with the doctor and some of the other health professionals about some other medical issues that may come up. We could be talking some weeks about cardiovascular issues. We could be talking some weeks about just general health issues, uh, wellness issues. How often should you get a checkup because you're thinking about preventing something from coming later on that could be much more serious? So we invite you to join us every Wednesday between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, and we'll have that conversation. You're welcome to join us. Better Health is, uh, is a, a service of the Tripp Family Medicine Office in Twin Falls, and they're located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office. Also wanted to mention Western States Bus Services, where they're hiring part-time bus drivers right now. Split shifts five days per week, summer's off, and you have scheduled no school days. That means if it's a snow day, you stay home. Pay is $10.75 per hour. You can apply today by contacting 
733-8003. That is 733-8003. Western States Bus Services is an equal opportunity employer. I just looked up at my monitor here in the room, and they're showing some pictures from the overnight. The sun is now, sun is now up in Ferguson, Missouri. St. Louis County, Missouri is the bigger jurisdiction. The sun is now up there, but some of the some of the video is coming in there. They're just showing some of the pictures from last night. Two police officers happened to be shot there uh, by some thugs who still remain anonymous, firing from a darkened alley on crowded streets during a riot. I read today on the website of the communist magazine Mother Jones where some liberal was saying the police did it to themselves to cause a riot, and I thought, How asinine is that comment, that police would shoot other police officers to cause a riot? It just shows you how clearly unhinged and insane the American left happens to be. Some more thoughts on this coming up in just a few minutes. It's 8.40 and 46 at our studios. You know, government, government over the last 25 years, you go all the way back to the Clinton administration, and you look at Waco, Texas, and you look at Ruby Ridge, Government was responsible in many cases for what they call militarizing police departments across this country, or at least in the the federal sphere, and then giving the equipment after 9-11 to departments all across the country to to further advance that. But, But for the average police officer who gets up in the morning or heads out to work in the afternoon or on the overnight, they're still doing the job that my father did 40, 50 years ago, and other people who were in law enforcement have been doing for decades and decades and decades in this country, and that is just primarily trying to ensure that everyone, not just themselves, but everyone gets home safely. Huge part of that job, it just comes down to that. And after what I've seen that happened in Ferguson, Missouri last night, let me just tell you something. Eric Holder and Barack Obama... And they're part of a government that has built up this big surveillance state, you know, NSA and everyone else snooping over your shoulders. We now know the CIA has been uh, trying to recruit local police departments to help them do domestic spying, which the CIA's job is to do spying overseas, not domestically. We're seeing all of these things happen, but yet Holder and Obama give a mixed message because they turn around along with their allies like Sharpton and Jackson And they call for a war on local police departments, which is what we're seeing brewing in this country. You've got criminals out there now who believe it's okay to take shots at police officers. You have a police officer who was killed in New York City because of that. And then the politicians tried to wash their hands and say, oh, we don't condone this. You created the situation. You created the situation in Ferguson, Missouri. I'll get to my callers in just a moment. Please be patient. Stick with me. Let me finish this thought. In Ferguson, Missouri, the report from Holder's office said, well, these police officers were racist. Because why? They told a few jokes. I read what one of the jokes happened to be. And, you know, it's not very nice. It said that uh, they didn't think President Obama would be around long. This is from the actual report. I'm telling you this from the report. I'm not making it up. That some officer joked with another officer, well, he won't be in office long because when was the last time a black man held a job for four years? Is it nice? No. But you know what? You're not required by law to like anybody in this country. That's not, you know, and the notion that someone's feelings are hurt, well, that's not against the law either, at least not yet. And lastly, if I could add to all of that, and I'll get to my caller, please be patient. Lastly, if I could add to all of that, When I keep hearing that, well, most of the people arrested in Ferguson, Missouri are black and most of the police officers are white. Well, the reason most of the people arrested there happen to be black is because it's an overwhelmingly black community. So the percentages are likely going to be more blacks arrested than whites. Why don't you have more black police officers? Well, all of those black teenagers who've been hanging around on the street corner with a lot of these other hoodlums, they end up having records. So therefore, they can't become police officers. Doesn't that ever resonate with the liberal media and the liberal politicians in this country? 847. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. We have a caller with us very patiently waiting on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You're on the air. Bill, I know I've exceeded my uh, two, two phone calls for the day, but I just want to make a quick point. We'll have to that suspend get... you just like Jeremy from BBC's uh, Top Gear. <laughs> I, you know, I get. 
get that point across. I am a mechanic by trade, and I'd like to get the liberals to understand something because they think the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But what they don't understand as a mechanic, you can only add grease so many times before you replace it. And it, it's broke. If you're squeaking that much, something's broke, and it needs to be fixed. And you guys sit there and yell that, that, that we're the problems, but we're not the problem. The breaking of laws are the problem, yes. and that's what's causing the problems. Yes. I just, there was a, and I thank you much for the call. There was a shooting in Wisconsin a couple of days ago, and immediately all of the usual suspects dived in. Oh, oh, we're racist cops. We've got to stop this. Well, the guy who was shot was a criminal. You point a gun at a police officer, you can expect that police officer is going to point his or hers, and they're likely going to shoot you before you can get the drop on them. That's just how it works. That's what they're trained to do. That's what they are supposed to do. And this notion among liberals that they're supposed to stand there and get themselves shot up in some sort of reparations uh, payment is, is, is absolutely ridiculous. You know, I was watching what was going on, and I'm seeing some of the, the still some of the pictures this morning in Missouri. I'm going to tell you, I think that these officers and deputies showed tremendous restraint. Someone starts shooting at you from the dark, two of your guys go down. Now it looks like they'll live, but they may never work as police officers again. They may never walk again. One was hit in the head, in fact, directly in the face. Uh, how can you justify? calling these people thugs. Uh, that's, that's what the left is trying to say that they are, Be because they, they took the bullets last night, but they didn't respond in a way that they probably could have, and that was to just open fire on the mob, because you don't know who in the mob is shooting at you. After a while, in wartime, if someone is shooting at you from, a, well, it used to be this way. In World War II, when we used to actually still win wars and, and, and do it well, if someone was shooting at you from a house or a barn and they were trying to kill you, you returned fire. Now, it could be that there were people in that house who were actually innocents, but the fact of the matter was you had to get the war over with and you had to kill the bad guys. So there was collateral damage. In modern warfare now, oh, well, we don't want to do that. You know, whenever you hear these stories about some Afghan wedding being blown up, that's a bunch of bunk. What happened is it's a bunch of terrorists and they happen to be hiding out in the, the wedding party or the wedding party is the ruse. But you have people who were involved here in, in Missouri who may... Look, if they were out at the riot, they were not innocent. There would have been no collateral damage. Don't go to the riot. You'll live longer. It's 850. Bill Colley with you on Top Story 46 at our studios. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We have another caller joining us, and you're up next. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Uh, your prior caller is right on everything he said except for his final assessment of it. The problem is not the breaking of the law. The problem is making laws which is written in American law is no law at all. That's what the problem is. They can't keep making things and just enforcing them on people when they are not law. That's, that's where this whole problem is coming from. Well, I admit that we have some unjust laws, but a guy going into a cigar store, roughing up the owner and, 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 and then stealing uh, from the owner, and then going out into the street and trying to you know, take a police officer's gun away, that guy, that guy wasn't violating any law that was an unjust law. He was just simply a criminal. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, say, this guy said that some cop went in and shot after the cops to cause the problem. It, it's not the cops shooting after the cop. It, this, uh, this, these people that Obama worked for are trying to get a war started in this country. They, they get their little wind-up toy, toys, which, are, which is actually a Manchurian candidate. They go in and do this problem. They, they're the ones that are the agitators. And it's, it's not new, and I thank you for the call. Back in the 1960s, there is now evidence that shows that the communist parties in places such as the Soviet Union and uh, in Eastern Europe, Chinese weren't quite so involved, but in, in, in at least the European communist parties and communist countries, that they were behind a lot of the demonstrations that took place in this country because they wanted to hurt the United States. They wanted to bring the United States down. They almost did it. They didn't finish the job. They're back now with a vengeance. 
And I was just reading uh, on the website the other day. In fact, I, I'm doing a little research in advance. Next Thursday morning, we're going to be joined on air by the chief executive officer of the John Birch Society. Arthur Thompson will be joining us right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX. He'll be spending some time with us because he's doing a presentation next Wednesday night in, in the Boise area. And then next Thursday night, he's going to be in Burley. And he's, uh, he's doing these presentations about the trade agreements that are going to hurt America and hurt American workers. But while I was checking out the website, I was reading some of the details about who is really behind a lot of these shenanigans that are going on in our, in our cities and, and on our streets. And the people who are involved do not mean the United States well. And many of them, you know, we, we, we heard the word traitor thrown around earlier today, Republicans being accused of being traitors because they're trying to stop Iran from getting a nuclear bomb and start, you know, destroying its neighbors with nuclear weapons. The real traitors are the people who are out fomenting all of this unrest and, 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 and doing it under the guise of civil rights when it's some local drug addict who's actually committing the crime. 854, you can reach the program this morning by giving us a call at 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Also, my email address is bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And the last name is spelled C-O-L-L-E-Y. My only email this morning says Powerball, which I did not win, which means I will be back here tomorrow. <laughs> I'd be back here anyway. I, you know, all of these people who talk about winning you know, big jackpots or lotteries, first of all, I don't, the jackpot, I, when I go to a casino, I go for one reason. I'm going there to eat. I don't go there to gamble. But I do buy the occasional lottery ticket. I'll be at Fred Meyer and I'll think, all right, I'll just grab one and, and, and do that foolishly. <laughs> but I buy it anyway. And um, for what little I spend on it, I guess it's not going to bankrupt me. But all of these people who say I would retire and I'd go travel the world, well, I might do a little traveling, but retiring just does not appeal to me. I'd much rather be doing this. And, and I, could, I could probably do it in a, in, a, in a much bigger venue. Or I'm saying build my own studio when I'm not on the air here. Then I could go home and squawk for another five or six hours. Sure, that beats working. That's how I look at it. We have another caller with us? Nope. Let's try this line then. We have, uh, we have callers looking to get in touch with us. You're up next, and you're on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And uh, also, uh, we should point out NewsRadio1310.com, which means people can hear us anywhere around the world online. What's on your mind? Yeah, Bill. Good morning. Uh, one thing is totally forgotten in this country. Nobody even brings it up. Constitution, when any elected official gets into office, well, the first things they do is get sworn in. They take an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States. Almost every one of our politicians should be brought up on the charge of perjury because when they raise their right hand to uphold the laws, uh, over and over again, we don't see it. Now, you can walk in the courtroom, raise your hand up, and take the oath. You're going to get charged pay perjury the minute you lie. Thompson, uh, who I mentioned will be on the air with us in one week, he had a video on the JBS website, one of his most recent videos, where he said, don't even trust people who call themselves conservatives, because they'll say, well, I got an 80% rating for, for voting conservative. He said, well, if you're a true conservative, you'd have a 100% rating with adherence to the Constitution. And 80% means four out of five times you're reliable, but one out of five you're not. And And... That's American politics today. Uh, right, but that's not what our Constitution says. Yeah, and, and, and that's a problem. And, and I thank you much for the call. You have too many people out there who say, well, you know, this is the way the system works. I'm sick and tired of hearing this is how the system works. We don't want the system to work that way. We elected you to stop that from happening. And when you get there, we expect you to continue it. That's why you've got – we are up against those some very nefarious forces – because no matter this, this fellow Tom Cotton, who got elected to the U.S. Senate from Arkansas, and he was behind a letter to Iran saying, hey, don't get too comfortable with this Barack Obama guy. He's gone in a couple of years. And, and, and Cotton is being insulted in every mainstream media outlet from, from coast to coast now, uh, being called a, a, a traitor, uh, being attacked, uh, being called dangerous. But you know what? He's extremely popular with the people who elected him because he's doing exactly what he said he would do. Now, there's something that's a shock, isn't it? And yet he's a rarity. 
he's he's a he's such a complete rarity. At least we're starting to see, I think, a a, a rumbling, a bubbling up, if you will. The Tea Party was the start of it. It's not the finish, but we're we're starting to see that, and we're starting to see this. Uh, more and more people out there are getting a better, I think, grasp of how it actually works. I was talking to some people uh, who teach constitutional issues uh, from the, the what is it, Northern Liberty Academy. And uh, I may not co- quite have that right. They'll be joining us too sometime in the next couple of weeks. But they're, they're doing their best to educate young people. And you know why they have to do it? Because they're not getting it in schools, at least most schools from what I can see. But they are teaching more and more young people about what, what your liberties really are. And they're guaranteed by God, not by any government. You have to assert them. You don't have to ask for them. And the more we do this, the more impact it has on the political world, the better off we're all going to be. It's 859, 46 at our studios. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. This is News Radio 1310 KLIX, News Radio 1310.com. Hatch joining us in just a few minutes from Idaho Fish and Game. Got lots to talk about there and a lot going on. Of course, always uh, details from his office straight ahead. And uh, we have a very special guest joining us. Uh, he, he gets to do this once a month with us. Uh, that's because otherwise he's very busy the other 30 days. Uh, the, the, the state keeps him uh, moving around. Kelton Hatch is joining us from Idaho Fish and Game. First of all, welcome back. Hey, thanks. I appreciate you having me over. Is I always get a kick out of coming in here and chatting. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's probably one of the better part of the uh, parts of the job, right? It is. It is. You've got a lot going on here. I'm looking over the list. Um, but but first of all, uh, some of these big game meetings, uh, for people, obviously, who are involved, big game hunters are a unique breed themselves. Uh, there's a reason, though, they should be attending these, right? There is, and we and I was going to tell you, we talk, talked about these a little bit last time. We had tremendous turnouts this year. We had some of our highest uh, numbers of folks out. Um, in Twin Falls, we had almost uh, 60, 70 people. Burley, we had about 50, 60. Sun Valley, we only had three or four, not as many things that were being changed, but we had really good turnouts. We had a lot of, uh, had a lot of really good comments. Um, just, you know, it's good to see people. There's a few changes and because of the comments that we, uh, we, uh, we received, we actually changed the proposals that we was looking at doing a little bit. Um, we were looking at increasing the uh, bull tags for elk in the South Hills, just south of town. But we had a lot of comments on people really wanting to keep that a limited entry, trying to grow bigger bulls. And so we ended up cutting that back to 10 tags. Uh, our proposal is just to cut it back to 10 tags for each hunt. So there'll be 30, 30 bull tags down there. We are, are looking at increasing cow tags. But I guess the, the reason I kind of hit on that is... You're going to notice my list is kind of crazy because this morning I had to go pick up some baby owls. I got a phone call at, uh, late last night, and, and so at 6.30 this morning I was out trying to track down these baby owls that had got tipped over in a haystack, and we got those all. So I came back and hurried and slapped things I, together. I so some of them are a little disjointed. I've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> That's the first time anybody ever told me they went on the way to the radio station to pick up baby owls. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. And so uh, it, it's that time of year. So when you're digging in your haystacks and things like that, uh, you might run into some baby barn owls. So keep your eyes peeled, and if you have issues, give us a holler. But I guess uh, the reason I've got that next portion down there is on March 23rd and 24th, we're all the proposals that were given us, um, we're taking those to the commission. If folks want to be able to comment on this again, um, go the evening of March 23rd, and we'll have a public meeting in Boise, and people can get up and, and testify why they would like to see things changed or not changed. And, you know, it, it's a cool process because we come up with proposals from things that uh, sportsmen give us. We take them to the people. You know, the, it's a democracy at work, <laughs> and, and let them look at it. And then the commission looks at it and determines what the people want from their, their comments, and then they get another saying before uh, they, they, they rule on it, and they'll be ruling on those on March 23rd in Boise. So run over there to Boise and, and learn about the process or testify if you have, have different ideas on things. Getting into a time of year now where, you know, seasons are changing and all, and that's going to impact a, uh, a lot of what's going on too as well. 
Oh, it is. We'll see a lot more fishing, for instance. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, right now, everybody thinks, uh, you, when would you think our busiest time of year would be? Fishing game. Idaho fishing game. Everybody goes hunting in the fall. People fish in the summer. So when do you think it would be the busiest time? I would pick the summer out of that. You, you know, and, and most people don't. You know, most people go, oh, probably the fall when every, all the hunters out, when you got, you know, 200, 300,000 hunters out there. It's actually right now in the spring. Spring is just crazy because we've been having these big game meetings. Right now we've got uh, uh, bitter brush plantings that we're, we're starting to plan. I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. We've got all these meetings that are going on. We're getting ready for fishing. Now everybody's geared up. You know, fisheries are the most busy in the summer because they can't really study fish through ice. And so, yes. Yes. And so <laughs> they get pretty busy that time of year. But, um, you know, there's just a lot of things going on right now. It's kind of fun. It's a, it's a good time of year and we're getting close to some hunting seasons coming up. And so lots going on. I was going to say for the, the people who come to the meetings, um, there's a, an important reason to do that, right? I and mean, you, you can obviously, you can pick up some of this stuff via maybe a website or read about it now and then, but coming to the meeting actually is probably the best way to keep up to speed well it is it, 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 the the thing is is i love going to the meetings myself i mean I'm, I'm i'm inundated with hunting and fishing information every day i get phone calls i talk to sportsmen from all over the country i mean we're always planning things but when i go to these public meetings there's nothing i like to do more than talk to get people's perspective because everybody's got a different perspective on everything. I mean, I listen to your radio show. You've got a different perspective than other people do. Otherwise, you wouldn't get calls, yeah. you know, and yeah. things like that. And so perspective. And so it's really nice because we're not trying to manage just one unit that you hunt. We're trying to manage the whole resource as one, but it's nice to hear from that guy that hunts just 54 or 55 or 43 or these units that surround us because we get to hear what their perspective is, what they would like to see in that unit. And that, that way when we can kind of join it all together, it helps give us a better insight on how to try to manage the wildlife in those units better for everybody. I mean, we want to make sure to we have enough for the future and all those things. But, you know, we understand the biological part. But it, the part that those meetings really help us with is uh, uh, is seeing how people want to be able to harvest those animals and stuff. I had a friend that he says, you know, he says, I'm done complaining. He says, I decided I can't complain unless I show up to all the meetings. And so he he started to come to all the meetings. You know, he's as busy as anybody else. But it's nice because he gets to see the, the painstaking things that we do to try to manage wildlife for folks. We have a caller, I believe, looking to join us. Oh, great. First of all, Kelton Hatch is in studio with us from Idaho Fish and Game. And uh, he's, uh, he's talking with us just about a variety of topics today, as well as taking some of your telephone calls. It's 91346 at our studios. This is Bill Colley, too, as well, on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And caller, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, stuff that I see Fish and Game doing. Every year, twice a year, I try to go up to Riggins and do some steelhead fishing or salmon fishing. Well, I went two weeks ago, and I wound up catching uh, two steelhead. They were about 34, 35 inches long, and then two more 24 inches long. But the point is, the way it's taken care of, and, and you're familiar, and I love this name, Skookum Chuck is where I caught him up by Whitebird, with a guide. But but the way the land is treated now, and there's and this is going to sound silly, but there's outhouses everywhere, which I think is a necessity, and the takeouts and, and uh, the cleanliness. Uh, I just, you know, that's the other end of the state, but it's just a pleasure to go up there and see the deer, bald eagles, uh, flops of turkeys, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to make that comment about the, my experience with fish and game stuff. Well, thank you. I greatly appreciate that. You know, and that's what and that's what it's for. You're doing the right thing. You're getting out and enjoying Idaho for why people want to live in Idaho. And you know, I'm glad you got some fish, and it, it, it's a great experience. But I appreciate the comments. Steelhead is going to be a topic today. In fact. Oh, steelhead! Yeah, and you see, and that's one thing. 
I was going to, that's one, one of my favorite things every year for a spring break, I drag my kids. We don't, I'm not what you call a good angler. Yes. I'm more of a hunter. And so, you know, everybody says, well, you're fishing game. You should be able to do everything. Perfect. Guess what? <laughs> I, I still had <laughs> once a year, <laughs> you know, I'm jealous of these, uh, the, these hardened anglers put me behind a bird dog, put me in a, you know, deer hunting and right at home but still hadn't you know i'm always jealous when i talk to these guys who go up there like this gentleman he, he lands four in a weekend well you know I, I i haven't landed four in a weekend ever but uh no that'll be good we'll get talking about that because numbers are looking good this year and uh, we're gonna have a good season i was going to say uh for for people by the way who'd like to know a little bit more a lot of people have been away from it for a long time like i have and a lot of people who may have just moved into the area too as well perhaps are, are thinking, you know, I moved here for this type of recreation. You send them to the website, right? You can find all sorts of details on seasons and licensing and everything else. You can. Our website is, as far, I'm going to boast on it. I think it's one of the best in the West. And the reason is because we got a thing called Fish Planner on there, and we got another one that's called Hunt Planner. So a novice can go on there, click on what they want to do, whether it's hunting or fishing, put in how many miles from a city, what type of fishing they want to do, um, whether it's boat, whether it's general, um, and then you click on a ma- uh, on the mouse, and it'll tell you all the areas you can go fishing, what the catch rates, what the stocking rates are, what everything is going on in those areas, and that'll that's a, just a place to get you started. Once you finally determine what you want to do, give the office a call and talk to one of our biologists. That's what they're there for, you know. Doug McGargle and Scott Stanton, they're there all the time, and they can answer any of your fishing questions. And then they've got a bunch of folks that talk about hunting, and you can do the same thing. You know, we get a lot of phone calls early on uh, people wanting to talk about units and where to put in, and so that's always nice to talk to them about that. But, you know, it's best if you do a little research figure out where you want to go, and then give us one of us a call and ask questions on that area because it's always hard when people say, well, where's the place? Where's that elk tied up? Well, I don't know exactly what type of train you want to hunt, so kind of do some research online. We have a caller with us. Uh, you're on the air. Kelton Hatch is our guest at News Radio 1310 KLIX. Good morning. Yeah, hi. I just called, and what I failed to mention was three of the four fish, that, including the two biggest, were hatchery-raised. And the fourth one was wild, and I'm a believer in catch and release. So they all went back, but that means the hatchery program is working. When you can catch 34-inch hatchery-raised steelhead. So anyway, just wanted to add that because I forgot. <laughs> well, I, pre- I appreciate that. I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, it's neat that he was able to release them, but... I might have kept one, <laughs> you know, because they are tasty. But, no, it's good because if they go upstream and spawn, they add to the wild productivity. And one thing that if they die in the stream, it really helps the nutrient levels in the stream so that the, the smolt have have more food, feed. We have about a minute before our first break, and uh, we're going to take another telephone caller. Uh, you're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and com. that is. Our guest, Kelton Hatch, and uh, good morning to you, too, as well. Good morning. Yeah, I just wanted to put in a plug for the website. You guys do have a great website. It's what I do or part of what I do for a living, and it's actually one of the most usable websites in the state. And just wanted to say I appreciate that. Hey, thank you very much. See, most of the people, though, who are hey. coming to your website are, are already, I mean, how shall we put it? This is a, Computer this, savvy. Yeah, and, and so, but when they see it, too, you've got people... It's, it, let's face it, it's not a controversial type of topic either, where some state agencies... Well, no, you need to come to some of our big game right. meetings. I, I'm feeling really good right now because we got two really positive comments, and I just got done with big game meetings, and some nights you go home pretty bloody and beaten, you know. <laughs> uh, and I can appreciate that because people are passionate about this sport. You know, hunting and fishing, I mean, you'd, high school football may be the only thing that people get, or hockey, things like, that. you know, may be the only couple things that people get more passionate about, but I, I don't know, hunting and fishing is pretty near and dear to a lot of folks' hearts around here. Well, we've got more coming up. Kelton Hatch is going to be with us, with us through the hour this morning on uh, News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. This is Top Story with Bill Colley, 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, 47. So hold on to those telephone calls if you've got more questions or comments. Our guest uh, this hour of the program, Kelton Hatch from Idaho Fishing Game. Uh, we're having some personal conversations off air. 
which is sometimes better than the actual conversation on air. <laughs> <laughs> See, what we need to do, Kelton, is when we have the show on with the camera up here, we need to stream it live, and then people could still catch some of that. It, well, I don't know if we'd want them to or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here, yeah. <laughs> We're talking this morning about some issues related to fish and game. And uh, also taking some of your telephone calls as well. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, this is Top Story with Bill Colley. We we have a lot on your agenda, and because of the, we're more than willing to take calls, but of course we, we want to at least hit on a few other topics too as well. You bet. You bet. But you know, it's like we was talking during the break. It's nice to get the calls from folks because if I can answer folks' questions, I'm sure somebody else is out there sitting with the same question you call in with. And so, you know. We do have some fun things going on right now, though. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, you, you know, talking about some of the meetings, for people who are now getting ready for the fishing, um, are there certain things that they should keep in mind? You know, fishing, fishing. well, the first thing you need to get, keep in mind is, wow, it's early for good fishing, and the fishing's good right now. Mm-hmm. Um, bass anglers are just going nuts right now because how often can you catch catch bass i mean i was talking to some guys down at slaggers and i mean the water temperature's down still it was around 47 48 degrees and typically you don't start seeing those fish move a lot till it gets a little bit warmer but they caught their first uh first bass four weeks ago you know and uh cj strike right now is fishing just hotter than a two dollar pistol i mean they're 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 just having fun over there the carp are up for people that like archery archery shooting carp um Salmon Falls Creek, uh, the the inlets over there along the bank, uh, the rainbows are have really moved in, and people are just having a ball catching big rainbow. I was over in Oakley not too long ago. Folks are lying in the bank down there catching trout. You know, it, it's really really early for this good of fishing, and so you know why the why the sun's shining and it's warm. Go get a line wet and drown a couple worms, and you could have a good time. We have another caller with us. In fact. Uh, Got a couple of folks I think we're trying to get through this morning. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 47 at our studios. It's 926, and you're on the air with Kelton Hatch. Uh, yeah, I was um, pretty new to the area, and I was wondering what would be a resource that I could go to to find out what fish are biting on, uh, where the good fishing is. Uh, I guess I. I don't know that information, so I haven't had much luck, and I want to go where the fish are, and I want to know what what they're biting on. Okay, no. Well, uh, probably the easiest thing to do. A lot, and this sounds kind of weird, but a lot of our sporting goods stores are really really handy at this i've been amazed since i moved to twin falls and i talked to the different folks at the sporting goods stores they've they've, some of them have got good uh good uh reports that they keep in there their their staffs are are pretty dang good especially on steelhead rigs or bass rigs or, or local fishing most of them are avid anglers the other thing that i'd suggest is just calling the regional office and talking to one of our biologists especially being brand new uh to the area uh take 10 or 15 minutes um, and talk to one. We also have another book over there. It's called Fish Idaho. And it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a book that we, we give out to folks. It's not really a book. It's kind of a, it's just a thin, probably 20 page, uh, magazine style book but it it highlights different areas, the fish that are planted in those areas, um, the regulations, and it can kind of get you started. And then just the time of year, uh, it's hard to beat night crawlers around here in a lot of ways, but I mean, if you're going after walleye and different times of year for trout and stuff like that, there's other, other, other options. But I'd just give Doug or Scott a call over there at the regional office. It's three two four, four three five nine, and either one of them would be happy to talk to you about that. I want to thank you for the call, and we have another caller joining us. It's nine twenty eight. Got about a minute and a half here before the break. We could at least get through the question or comment. Mm-hmm. You're on the air too, as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Uh, good morning. Hey, I don't know if I missed it this morning already, but I, I keep hearing murmurs that there's wolf packs up in the South Hills now. Is that true? You know, we don't have an established pack down there. And the reason I can say that with a surety is we haven't had any cows or sheep die. Um, Cows and sheep are just slower and dearer, and if we get wolves into an area, they end up killing livestock. There has been sightings, and there has been documented proof of wolves passing through the area. 
but not any established packs. Um, and so, you know, they, they travel, uh, they, they're big rangy things, and when the, one of them gets kicked out of a pack, uh, they're out looking for love in all the wrong places sometimes, and they'll... Uh, They'll run down through the South Hills, or and we've had them ran over in Denver, Colorado. They've been down in Salt Lake. I mean, we've got packs that have moved to Oregon and stuff like that all the way around us. And so they're moving through, but there's no established packs down there. I want to thank you for the call. We've got more coming up. In fact, as you pointed out, sometimes things get a little controversial. We'll talk about wolves in just a couple of minutes if okay, we can. Okay, sounds good. I know it's on your list this morning. It's 9.30.47 at our studios. Kelton Hatch is our guest from Idaho Fish and Game. This is News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley. Our studio guest this hour, Kelton Hatch. He is with Idaho Fish and Game. Drops by once a month, takes some time with us to talk about various issues that obviously are of importance to his department, but also as well to uh, a great many of you because we're talking about a lot of recreational activities across the state of Idaho. Um, you were talking with uh, one of the callers just briefly about wolves, and of course, there was the. This started originally. They were they were actually trying to cull the herd, so to speak, in British Columbia across the across the border, but it's also taking place now in uh, Idaho as well, which tells us, I guess, that the reintroduction program has been more than a success. Yeah, it, the wolves have definitely taken off in the state. Um, you know, th- this control action is one that we've been doing for several years, and people don't understand. Um, we, we do remove quite a few wolves from the population. And that's why when the caller says, oh, I've been heard their reports of the South Hills with wolves and stuff like that. It's, I guess, like the Copper Basin herd. Every time we get a pack of wolves in the Copper Basin, which is up above Cary, over by Arco in that area, um, they end up biting a cow and depredating livestock. And so we go in and we rem- remove that pack. I think we removed it seven times. Um, in like a matter of five years, and and now we haven't been having the issues. There's still wolves up there, but we're getting rid of those depredating wolves. And so just to let people know, I mean, in the low, low zone, we did remove, uh, got to find the, find the exact number. We removed uh, 19 wolves through aerial gunning through wildlife services. And then during the past five, uh, five years, they've to- taken a total of 48 People think that sounds like a, a, quite a few, but like uh, we this year have removed a, uh, 99 by trapping and 117 um, through hunting in the state of Idaho. And then I, I printed this form off and I didn't get the number on how many we had re- removed with wildlife services. Typically we remove another 200 a year through wildlife services on depredating livestock. And so we are in certain areas like in, uh, around uh, 49, 48, the smoky and, and, and zone, as well as the, the, uh, the, uh, over in the Bennetts and over in that area, we're actually seeing really good recovery on elk. The reason we're still elk gunning uh, wolves in the, the low, low zone is we've basically gone from 16,000 elk down to around 2,100 elk, estimated populations. There's also other e- e- uh, reasons for the reduction of, of uh, elk in those areas because we do have some habitat issues, uh, but wolves have helped suppress that. We have another caller with us. It's 936 47 at our studios. This is Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley and our guest, Kelton Hatch. And you're on the air. Good morning, guys. I hunt the Sawtooth Zone, and this is the least elk I have ever seen up there. Um, we spent a bunch of money introducing these wolves. They aren't even the same type of wolves that were natural to this area. We had timber wolves, not gray wolves. And now we're spending a bunch of tax dollars trying to keep them from getting out of control. It's kind of ridiculous. I I, I, I I definitely understand where you're coming from on this. Just to kind of go back, the federal government actually introduced them. We didn't. Uh, the Department of Fish and Game, and and yeah, we we do spend quite a bit of uh, quite a di- bit of time uh, managing them. Um, hopefully, we can get uh, hunters more in tune with doing that, like we do other prey predator species. I mean, we uh, we manage our bears and lions. Um, through hunting activities, and our sportsmen are actually getting better at figuring out how to hunt them and stuff like that. And so we're having good, uh, good control on wolves in some of our other areas. Uh, Sawtooth zone was one of those zones that truly did struggle. Um, 
in the last two years we've actually seen an increase in overall elk number but one of the issues we're really struggling with up there is just uh we need a little bit of fire or some trees removed from some of that area because we got a lot of old growth in there there's a lot of dead beetle killed timber and stuff in there my fear is when it does start on fire it's not going to quit <laughs> you know yeah. but you know uh, a lot of these front range elk herds have really started uh, improving just because of fire and we bring back more grass and and that helps reproduction we have a, i think one more caller before the break we'll at least get the caller on the air and then we may have to uh uh, give the response following the uh, the break. It's nine thirty eight. You're on the air on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX. Good morning. I have a recommendation that uh, may, may go through the break, but I'd like to uh, between Minidoka and Carrot, there's about two to three hundred thousand acres of of desert out there, and uh, I see that we are um, killing five hundred bison out of um, out of Yellowstone every year. Why don't we put free ranging bison in that area for a couple of reasons? Number one, it is it would improve the sage grouse habitat. Number two, it would repress the fire dangers out there uh, because they, uh, the bison would eat that June grass when it's green and young and thus re- reduce the fire hazards in that area, which improves sage grouse habitat. And that would open up another whole front of hunting uh, for uh, sportsmen in that area just to control and maintain that population. We may have to finish this one up in the next segment, but got about 30 seconds. Oh, about there. 30 seconds. You know, we're always open to ideas. One of, one of the issues that we, we could possibly face, I'm not saying that it's a, it, it would be a done deal, but is after that June grass was gone and those animals would end up migrating to that edge land. I'm afraid they'd end up like the elk have. But we've had heavy control actions up there because then they end up migrating into all the ag fields along the edge where it's green and lush and better habitat. Um, you know, bison did at one time roam all that area. So, you know, it's always something to look into. All right, we've got more with Kelton Hatch on the way. From Idaho Fish and Game, it's 940, 47 at our studios. You're listening to Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Kelton Hatch is a very popular man uh, this morning, and I'll tell you why. We're coming out of the break, and people are still trying to. Uh, to reach him this morning. He's you gotta love from... it. You gotta love it. <laughs> from Idaho they're being, and they're game. being nice, and so this is, this is awesome. They are being nice. They've got some interesting <laughs> suggestions today, they too, do. as well. They do. 944 47 at our studios. You're listening to Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And you're on the air with Kelton Hatch. Kelton, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. You know, with all the stuff going around with enforcement and stuff. I just like to personally thank you guys for what you do. I don't always agree with what you do, but in the in the 23 years I've been hunting at Unit 49, I have never run into a fishing game guy that was ignorant or anything else. I think you get what you give. You treat them with respect. You get respect. They'll talk to you. They'll give you good advice and everything else. But if you get nasty with them, then you get what you deserve. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I got to ask you a quick question. How have you been liking hunting 49 the last couple of years? Uh, he didn't stay with us. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm tickled for him. 49 has been a great unit, but I do appreciate his comments. We have another caller looking to join us, and you're up next at 945 on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with the situation they have going on in Fort Collins and Denver, Colorado area. Uh, their their geese population is just out of control there, and you know everywhere you go, the sidewalks, uh, park benches, just crap everywhere. And the, the birds are just domesticated, or even you can't even get them to fly away. But my question is, is we're having the same problem here. It's coming. It's it's going to be just as bad. Are you, have you guys are you, are you uh, having conversations on dealing with that problem in our area? We are. It's a major concern everywhere. These domestic, I mean, the, these native geese or Canadian geese that end up becoming domesticated on golf courses and in downtown Boise. Up in Lewiston, we actually imposed a few hunting air, uh, hunt, hunts in town on places that we felt were um, w- with with the right hunters that we could actually address those problems. It, it, it's a major problem. Um, 
across the United States. And, uh, yeah, it's one of our concerns. I mean, up in Boise Park Center and stuff like that, they've actually been banding ducks to try to see, I mean, geese, to see where they're coming from so that they can implement maybe higher harvest on areas where these uh, these geese are coming from and try to find out where they're, they're nesting and things like that to hope, hopefully increase harvest on the birds before they get back to where, you know, downtown Boise or, you know, or in any of our other cities around the state. And so I do appreciate the comment. And uh, that's one problem with cities. I mean, and urban wildlife, uh, it's amazing the battles that we fight trying to manage his wildlife everybody thinks they're awesome until they've got you know it's like the guy that started feeding turkeys because he wanted to have a few turkeys in his backyard and we told him do not feed the turkeys do not this is over in eastern idaho and he says why there's only a few and we love looking at them wouldn't let anybody hunt them well three years later he had 150 of them and his kids don't dare go out in the backyard because they get crapped on the turkeys you know it's killed his yard out and urban wildlife is a tough deal to work with and um, we always get kicked around a little bit because, but we we try to manage wildlife for their protection as well as human protection. I know that on the uh, east coast, uh, east coast flyways, there we go. I can get that out sooner or later uh, along the Atlantic Ocean. I used to drive by fields in the winter time, and you'd see a hundred thousand snow geese oh, out in the fields. And snow geese, we're trying to nip that in the bud right now. <laughs> We've got longer seasons late. People go, well, why are you having a snow geese season? Because there's not very many of them around here. Well, we don't want very many of them around here because they multiply so quick. And when you get them into these ag fields and stuff like that, they're just devastating. Yeah. You know, to crops and everything else. And, you know, yeah, it's an opportunity for sportsmen. But, no, I appreciate your call. And if you come up with some really good ideas, we'd like to hear them. <laughs> so. We've got Mike Huckabee coming up in just about a minute. But anything you want to add before we wrap up today? You know, I was, I was going to look through this. Get ready. Bear and turkey season open on April 15th. It's just around the corner. We should, we've should. we got a ton of bitter brush plantings coming up. If people are interested in volunteering, doing something good for wildlife, bring your, your group out, bring just yourself and your family or just yourself out and help us plant bitter brush. You can call the office, 324-4359, Tanner Ray Alberti or Eric Friedman, and they can line you up with one of our groups to go plant bitter brush. What the bitter brushes and sagebrush is for is to reestablish these uh, shrubby plants in areas that were burned, trying to help habitat for mule deer and sage grouse. So we got a lot of those coming up. Um, fishing's great. Uh, I was going to look at turkey around the season. Steelhead is going to be tremendous this year. People are, you know, Buddy's uh, wife was up there with a couple of her girlfriends. They boated 11 fish in four hours. It's going pretty good right now. But, you know, just get out and have some fun. Enjoy the sun. It's going to rain and snow and be cold and turn back into winter again. So Quickly, one more time, what's the website if people would like to look at it? Fish and Game, all one word, fishandgame.idaho.gov. And it, it's a great website. You click on Hunt Planner. You click on Fish Planner. It gives you harvest stats. It gives you drawing odds. Anything you're looking for is on there. I want to mention Mike Huckabee is coming up with a Huckabee Report, brought to you exclusively by the financial advisors at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls, 736-6563. And we want to thank Kelton Hatch for joining us from Idaho Fish and Game. We'll see you next month. Hey, sounds good. Thanks. And we'd like to thank Governor Huckabee very much. It's 954 uh, as we're wrapping up today's edition of Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Of course, uh, Bill Colley with you. Do want to point out tomorrow, I've got a guest on the air who's going to be joining us from something called Pro English. Pro English is backing a bill currently in the U.S. Senate, and some of your own senators may be supporting this too as well, and that is to make English the official language of the United States. And he's scheduled to join us between 8.30 tomorrow morning and 9 o'clock. I do hope you can join us and tune in and, and listen to that as well, and he may be able to... Uh, answer some questions you have as well. This is the second time I've been joined on him on various radio shows, or joined by him on various radio shows I've hosted over the last five years or so. Uh, but this may be the first time, because of the Republican majority in both houses of Congress, that we might finally get an, a bill through that would establish English as the national language. Because right now, the United States does not have an official language. Also wanted to remind you that our good friends at Western States Bus Services are hiring part-time bus drivers right now, split shifts, five days per week, summers off, and scheduled no school days. 
Pay is $10.75 per hour. I've got to remind you, too, I don't do this often enough, that they will train you. If you do not have your license for driving a large vehicle like that, they will train you. They have a course, in fact, they can train you on. You can apply today. You can contact 733-8003. Western States Bus Services is an equal opportunity employer. Just quickly, you know, there was a debate in the early days of this country when they were first forming the country on whether there should be an official language. And uh, they, they actually almost, you, you, th- this is that trivia question that pops up every once in a while. They almost adopted German as the official language of the United States, but the, the resolution failed by one vote. Why were they going to adopt German? Because there was still a lot of bitterness about the English following the Revolutionary War. It never would have flown, though. You've got to think about that. The population already overwhelmingly was speaking English at the time, and if they were told you've got to Think about it in this context. Next week, Tuesday, St. Patrick's Day. In the early days of the Irish Republic, after Eamon de Valera killed off all of his rivals and took over the country and then declared it a republic and finally made the break with England official in, what, 1937 or so, he decreed that from that point on that Gaelic, ancient Gaelic, would be the official language of Ireland. So it was to be taught in all schools and it was to be used in business and that he felt if they readopted that as the national language, they would reestablish their ancient Irish culture. The problem was everybody was already speaking English. You can't put that genie back into the bottle. So English as a national official language makes sense because it's still what business is and most worldwide business is conducted in. And if you go on a plane flight and you fly to some other part of the world, you understand that those air traffic controllers They're generally speaking English. But here within the borders, the confines of the United States of America, it may finally be time. I saw a story, didn't get to it this morning, out of Manchester, New Hampshire, which is relatively about the same size as the Twin Falls area. The mayor of Manchester, New Hampshire says there are over, right now, 80 different languages, 80 different languages being spoken by students at his schools. And he says he has petitioned the federal government to at least give them a break on testing because a lot of these kids are not yet ready to be tested in English. And he's been waiting three years for some bureaucrat somewhere in Washington to give him the waiver. Well, if we said to people, you're required to speak it, they'd likely pick it up a lot faster. Rush Limbaugh will be along following news at 10 o'clock from Fox. Of course, Sean Hannity following news at 1 o'clock on Fox. And then uh, Fox News at 4 o'clock, followed right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310, uh, yeah, well, there we go, News Radio 1310.com by Glenn Beck. And again, God willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be back in this seat between 8, eight and 10 o'clock. And I'll, I'll be speaking English maybe officially myself tomorrow. Certainly not doing it today. Hope to see you then.